Thank you, Cheryl. Um, actually, uh, I, should, I should be saying I'm honored to be here on this platform among uh, all these experts. Uh, I guess today what I'm going to be giving you a perspective, what we really do in construction and how it's uh, been benefiting us. Um, so why we really use BIM is because we don't want to build the building twice. Uh, we get to build it virtually once, find all the problems, spell check it, and then uh, build it for one last time. So uh, what, a, what BIM is for a builder, we split into four different pies uh, in the life of the project. If you split the pie in the middle, that's really uh, the right side of it is the pre-construction stage. Uh, and that could start as early as the pursuit when we get involved uh, with, the, with using the BIM tools. And the other half is really uh, during construction and uh, the coordination. And sometimes we get into the build condition and we need to use some of these tools. So what that really, really means during the planning phase is using the 3D visuals as a uh, for site logistics planning, whether you know we're communicating to the city, communicating to the owner, or or uh, or designers uh, about what's the impact we're going to have. Uh, so this is just showing uh, what we plan for and what's actually been seen at Google Street View. We also uh, look at craneage and coverage. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very important, especially if you have adjacent buildings. If we're swinging um, a lot of, uh, especially in the city, you've got air rights that you need to communicate with the neighbors. Um, location of man hoist, uh, fencing. So this really gives us a snapshot on time of uh, how we uh, gonna impact site. So you take the 3D logistics and you add the time factor, that's 3D plus time, that adds up to 4D. So we're now simulating uh, our uh, site logistics. So on, on a project like Children's Hospital in Vancouver, I took some snapshots from, uh, from our uh, look-aheads. So here we're taking uh, a, a snapshot from the 4D simulation, uh, communicating to the authority of uh, what is the three week look ahead. Uh, and we use this regularly in our meetings, in our superintendent meetings, uh, uh, as well as, as I said, to communicate it to the owner, uh, so planning ahead. We also use a, a 4D summary. Uh, you've probably seen a, a very long schedule with Gantt view. We also leverage the 3D visual to kind of summarize uh, what what uh, is the schedule uh, is um, so in this in this here we we're talking about how much we're going to be digging in the hole how much is going to take us to go above with the structure the podium and then the overall structure plus the finishes so here we do we call it a 4d summary we use it at the beginning of uh, of any project just to communicate what are the durations it's just a, a another way to communicate a schedule so once we put all that together, um, we run a 4D simulation. The best way I, I like to describe 4D simulation is as a spell checker. It's an internal spell checker of the, of the schedule. So that's uh, really uh, what we uh, use it for. Uh, so now taking all the logistics. So here's a project here in Vancouver, just outside the city hall. Watch that house about to be relocated. That's a heritage home that uh, part of the deal is to be reloc relocated on the other side of the street. Uh, so we use this uh, as well uh, to communicate to the city. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, looking at the relocation of uh, utility lines. This was used during the pursuit stage. So, um, and without going to further details, we sometimes get models from the designers. Sometimes we have to build it ourselves. Um, we see the value of us, even if there is no model available to do it, just so we internally go through the discussion and validation before we present it to the client so we'll be uh, sure of what we're uh, planning for. So that Gantt view, this is a program called Synchro. 
uh, we basically color code uh, the activities with uh, what you see on the 3D model. So you see in orange the finishes catching up. So this is the tool, the visual tool we use, what I refer to as a spell checker. So we'll see how far are we catching up with structure. We'll look at the critical, the critical path uh, through the visuals. So off to the uh, second stage, which is really the estimate. Um, and we've done a lot of model-based quantity takeoff. We like to be consumers of the designer's model. Uh, we try to be in that. And, and with time, we're seeing more and more openness to access to models from designers. And the quality of the models are getting uh, good. Uh, depends on uh, who you're working with. But we're very lucky to work with uh, uh, world-class architects and designers and consultants. So, as I said, we use this during the pursuit. We, uh, the intelligence that is retained in the model, we extract it, like a model, uh, like a project here uh, locally in West Van, uh, residential. We are able to color code. So traditionally, a builder would use something uh, on-screen takeoff. I'm not sure you're familiar with it. It's like a PDF. Uh, uh, writer and then you just uh, draw lines on top of it and you get a linear feed of walls. Here we're leveraging the, the model to tell us that and then color coding it. Um, it's a project in, in the US we had, it's actually a client that came back to us from 2008. So this is what on-screen takeoff looks like versus the model which we did recently and we were able to compare numbers and then tie it back to the market where the market is today. Uh, tons of examples. This is just mostly for a uh, curtain wall system or skin. Um, I want to show you an example uh, where, again, you're, you're color coding. So just speaking of what we get from designers. So in this case, the model that was received from the architect was all focused about the layout of this residential uh, complex. They didn't really worry too much. They had a sketch of model happening in conjunction for the skin. But for us to go back to the client and provide a meaningful uh, market value, we had to go in, uh, in depth and, and add those or fill the blanks. So we've actually modeled this based on their drawings that they provided. So that's because we really needed to know how much glazing, how much panel we need. But we also look at, uh, I, I, I'm sure the tons of civil engineers here will appreciate is, is excavation is, a, is usually uh, an area that is unknown. There's a lot of guessing there. And in this project where we have actually a bedrock, so we took the boreholes from the geotech report and basically connected the dots and create that layer uh, that we call it the layer cake in a way and then we did a cut and fill uh, volume takeoff uh, from Revit itself that really helped us why this is important because it's it's not just uh, it's about material being transported and how is it going to impact the schedule so you're as you're moving rock you you, you can't care it's obviously weighing more than uh, sand so we we had to adjust our durations per level. So that was a very quick exercise. Again, it's an assurance of, uh, of our uh, excavation numbers. <clears throat> uh, we often run into projects that look like this, which is you know the Van Dusen Garden here in Vancouver with a roof that is uh, very uh, complex. Uh, what we receive from the architect is a, a, a Rhino model, which we convert into a BIM model. And we use this to basically sit with the trades and get a, an accurate quantity takeoff. We actually were 25% less what the trade uh, provided. So that was able to negotiate and bring the numbers down. So uh, during construction, uh, um, or just before construction, we, we leverage the, the clash detection. But sometimes we find ourselves uh, in the build condition, 
like we did in a high rise here in Vancouver. The bird nest on the top is a mechanical space, uh, but it also has an opening where a permanent uh, crane for the window washing. If you could imagine it's a robotic arm, the tower is twisted. So this is a platform that's gonna rotate. And I know some of you, uh, the students at UBC came and toured that site. So we're dealing with a, 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 the crane manufacturer uh, out east with very little 3D uh, capabilities. We got um, the steel model, which is a, a, the as-built condition uh, coming from the steel fabricator. And now we're marrying those two together. We had to model that crane based on the shop drawings and simulate the position of that robotic arm. And we found that there will be some clashes. We were able to communicate that back to the manufacturer and adjust the, the length. Uh, and uh, that ended up uh, as, a, as a good catch. Um, I'm not going to steal uh, the thunder from uh, Dr. Hussein, who's right after me, but uh, this is a project we uh, did in Calgary um, for the Bow, which is uh, the tallest building in Western Canada, uh, designed by Foster. Um, we, there's no doubt this is where the future is heading, is prefabbing, uh, being manufactured somewhere else, transported. Problem is, we don't think that way. Uh, and uh, it, there's always a challenges. You know, you bring two different approaches, uh, just like when concepts have been when it started. We're still changing to those. So I think this is the future. We've succeeded in uh, stacking the bathroom pods uh, through, through to, the, to the 60th floor. Uh, we looked at it as a, as a value to accelerate the schedule. We've ran into challenges with logistics, uh, but uh, we, we got it done. So here on campus, one of uh, our first projects, my first project was uh, the UBC Pharmacy, where I collaborated with Dr. Uh, Stop French, uh, where um, we've actually used the BIM trailer, which was a, a game, it's owned by UBC. It was pre-set up and exchanges, we were monitored throughout the process. So this is a pharmaceutical building. It's very intense when it comes to mechanical. It was no-brainer. Uh, UBC had made a, 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 a requirement for the use of BIM, so that made it easier for us. We acted as the CM and the BIM manager for the whole process throughout design into construction as a design build, as a design assist, sorry. So uh, what you're seeing here is a class report where we would meet on a Tuesday, uh, everybody bring their model into the virtual light table, I call it, uh, and we highlight uh, the problem on the left side of the screen, um, and then we come back on Thursday, and then everybody should have, by then, uh, resolved their problem. If they get it done, they get a happy face, not so happy if they don't. So uh, it was, a, it was a, a collaborative environment, uh, it involved not just the designers, actually towards the end, what you see here in the, in the BIM trailer are the traits and the designer was on the speakerphone because now towards the end, there's that involvement of mostly the, so if we're talking about a pipe to move an inch left or to the right, we don't have to get the designers to approve it. But if we're resizing duct, of course we would. <clears throat> So, uh, build condition, we, we try not to run into these problems, but uh, sometimes we do. Um, what I'm going to show you is a, a project here in Vancouver where the loading dock um, didn't uh, have, well, I should say the design drawings didn't take into consideration the three inch spray on insulation that is needed. So, um, as a result, we became with the challenge that the 12 foot 6 clearance for the truck in that loading truck that couldn't fit anymore and that obviously didn't uh, go too well with the client. Uh, now this is not a construction tolerance, it is a design problem, but we jumped onto it and we looked around what are the tools we could use and I, you know, laser scanning, which you saw some of it in the morning, here it worked really well. So you could see that laser scanner sitting in the middle, this took about 40 minutes to finish the task. So we ran the laser scan throughout the space. 
<clears throat> and what we generated is a, is a report uh, from the point cloud overlaid onto the void. We created a void to represent that 12 foot 6 head clearance needed. So uh, with that, clashing these two elements together, we were able to highlight the red areas as the pinch points uh, where we couldn't achieve that 12 foot 6 clearance. That meant uh, relocating some services which you see here, such as a cable tray. We were infringing by four inches onto some of the structural beam. So all that level of detail, level of accuracy, helped the structural engineer and the, uh, uh, the consultant, the, uh, the traffic consultant, to reroute or, or understand what are the risks. The good news is we were able to move most of these services and in terms of structure, that resulted in chipping some concrete and uh, bending some rebar, which you don't really like to do, but um, after, uh, you know, it wasn't, that report helped kind of see how severe is this, and then from a structural point of view, it was okay to do that. So you can see the column capitals here. So this is your flying through the point cloud that is, um, um, that was generated in 40 minutes. So that whole exercise took a week. So again, we're responding to a problem very quickly where traditionally we'll be shooting points, single points from, uh, from a total station. So that's really the life of, uh, of BIM uh, in, a, in a project. Um, today, in 2014, this is how uh, we split our time. So I'm just gonna end here, just giving you an idea of where we are today. Uh, we do a lot of 4D simulation at the, at the planning stage. And again, we carry that uh, exercise throughout the, um, uh, throughout the look ahead stage in the construction. Um, if you combine the orange and the gray, which is really the design coordination, the clash detection, we just make a distinction between the task of doing clash detection versus attending meetings and being using that. Um, it's almost like 50-50 with, uh, with uh, just a, as much as we do for the simulation. Uh, what you see in Magenta is 6%, which was a number that we uh, pledged for 2015 that we want to at least double, which is using the intelligence of the model um, into, uh, to do quantity takeoff. So with that, uh, I end uh, my uh, BIM at LEDCORP.